When something awesome happens to you, you want to tell everybody about it. So let me tell you a little story. When I was a freshman in college, I went on a mission trip to New Orleans right after Hurricane Katrina, and I saw this pretty girl, and I thought, I'm interested in her. So I started talking to her. She was a lot of fun. Uh, she had a great sense of humor. We were hitting it off. I thought she was pretty. I didn't know if she really noticed me, but... Because I was interested in her, I started to tell my friends, hey, I'm interested in that Sally girl. And then as I got to be better friends with her, eventually I asked her on a date. Eventually we went on a lot more dates. We started to get more serious. I eventually, because I was so excited about her, told my parents about her. Then eventually I was like, I am so sure I'm in love with this girl. I'm gonna ask her to marry me. And so, I asked her to marry me and she said yes. I couldn't believe it. I didn't deserve it at all, but she said yes. And I was so excited about that. I told everybody, I had to tell my, my family, I had to tell all my friends, I had to tell everybody. I just made the announcement on Facebook, on every social media that I had back in 2000, whatever it was. And I had to tell everybody because I was so excited about it. When something awesome happens to you, you gotta tell everybody. Eventually we got married, celebration, huge party was the best thing ever. I met the love of my life and I'm still married to her this day. We've been married for 13 years. I almost forgot for a second. We've been married for 13 years. It's the best thing ever. And so when something great happens to you, you want to tell people. Same thing with like my ninja stuff. My ninja stuff does not compare to my marriage. But with my ninja stuff, if I do something awesome, I want to share it with the world, right? Like um, I've got this really cool video. If you want to see it, check it out. <laughs> So that was crazy, right? Like that was one of the coolest things I've ever done in my life. I, I was like at one of my events and, and Kendall Ortez and I were like, let's see if we can run up the warped wall and do a bottle flip. And I got lucky and thought I stuck it. It stuck it for a second. And then I realized out of the corner of my eye, I didn't stick it. I'm going to catch it behind my back. And I caught it. Totally luck. But it was one of the coolest things ever. I shared it with everybody. I was so excited about it, right? And so some, when something awesome happens to you, you want to tell the world. Well, in the Christian life, there is a symbol that is a way that we tell the world what God has done for us whenever he saved us from our sin, whenever he washed our sins away. And the symbol is called baptism. This video is all about baptism. I want you to know what it means to get baptized. Like, why do we get baptized? I think there can be a lot of confusion surrounding this topic. It's very simple. And I just want to tell you as a new believer, or as someone who has believed for a long time that maybe you haven't really understood what baptism is all about, I want to do my best here to give a simple ex explanation of what the New Testament in the Bible talks about when it talks about baptism. When you give your life to Jesus, at that moment, Jesus washes your sins away, you become a new creation, right? We've already talked about all this. But what, when, when do you get baptized? Why do you get baptized? Well, here's what I see when I read the New Testament that baptism is one of the first acts of obedience that a Christian takes after they have received Jesus to symbolically show what has happened on the inside. You show that on the outside with baptism. Let me say that again, all right? This is a huge sentence. We're going to break it down. But baptism is one of the first acts of obedience that a Christian makes after they have received Jesus as their Savior and Lord, and it's a symbol that shows on the outside what happened to you on the inside. So let's break that down a little bit at a time. First thing, one of the first acts of obedience. Like where in the Bible does it say, get baptized, right? Like where does it say that? Does it, does it say that at all? Well, in Jesus's, uh, one of his final times with his disciples, it's called the Great Commission. Jesus is saying like what's really important to him before he goes back to heaven. And he says, go, he's talking to his disciples, to his followers, He's saying, here's your mission. Go, therefore, and make disciples or make followers, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So one of Jesus' main like commissions or like commandments to his disciples before he chunks deuce and heads back to heaven, right? Like one of the last things that he says is, is go and, and make followers of me and, and baptize them. So he's saying it's important for new believers to get baptized. Another place we see in scripture is in Acts chapter 2. We looked at Acts chapter 2 last week where we talked about um, how, how the new believers after the day of Pentecost, Peter preaches and 3,000 people get saved. And so I just want to reread um, chapter 2 verse 41 where it says, so then those who had received Peter's words were baptized 
In that day, there were about 3,000 souls that were saved. They were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, the breaking of bread, and, pr and prayer. And so right after they received Jesus, they're commissioned to get baptized. All right, this is something that Christians do. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed, if you were to look early in the New Testament, it, when Jesus is first starting his, his earthly ministry, is that Jesus get baptized. Like Now, a lot of times we associate, and we should, um, baptism showing that our sins are getting washed away. Like, right? like the water is a symbol of it, washing our sins away. Was Jesus a sinner? Absolutely not. But Jesus got baptized, and, and in that moment when he was baptized, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove descends down, and, and, and the Father speaks. It's one of the first times we, or maybe the only time in Scripture, we see all three of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, right there. The Father says, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. And so Jesus was starting off his ministry with baptism. And, and so whenever you get baptized, you were saying, I'm with Jesus. I'm with the one who got baptized. I want to follow in his footsteps. And so one of the first reasons we get baptized is because it's a commandment in scripture. Get baptized. If you're a Christian, get baptized. It shows what happens to you on the inside. I'll explain that more in a moment. So first and foremost, it's an act of obedience. If you have not been baptized, then you're disobeying Jesus. The second thing that I said in my statement is that it's one of the first things that a person does whenever they receive Jesus after they have um, given their life to Christ. And so um, one of the, the things that, that I see a lot of confusion on is when do I get baptized? And different denominations have different de beliefs, and I'm not here to get into all that. But what I see whenever I study scripture is that, um, especially in the book of Acts, like right after Jesus has, um, has ascended, gone to heaven, the Holy Spirit's there, like the church is getting started. Like one of the first things I see is that when someone repents and believes that they are forgiven. Like I see that right there in that moment, when someone turns from sin and they believe in Jesus, forgiveness falls on them. They are saved. They are right with God, right? Like they have a, a new relationship with God. That's when salvation happens. Then shortly after, they get baptized. Um, as, as quickly as in one story, Philip is sharing with a guy they call the Ethiopian eunuch, and he's sitting there and he's 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 reading the, the scriptures, and, and Philip explains the scriptures, and, and he he repents and believes, and, and Philip says, "Hey, there's water right here. Why don't we baptize you?" And so I think it's something that that should be done shortly after you receive Jesus, but after after you receive Jesus. And so I just want to ask you the question: Have you had a moment where you've given your life to Christ? And if you have had that moment, maybe you were 12, 13, 14, maybe it was last year, maybe you're 25, I don't know how old all of you are that are watching this video, but after you received Jesus, have you had a time of baptism? Have you had that, that moment where you have declared to uh, maybe a small group of believers or a huge church of believers that you are a Christian, where you have shown what Jesus has done for you after you repented and believed in Jesus? So number one, you do it to obey. Number two, you do it after you've been saved. And number three, I want you to understand that it's a symbol of salvation. It's a symbol. Baptism in and of itself does not save you. There's some passages in scripture that sometimes can confuse us. Like I think um, at Acts chapter um, 2, verse 38, we've been looking at Acts chapter 2, right? In verse 41. Uh, but in Acts chapter 2, let me turn there. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Um, says this, and I think this passage or this verse can kind of confuse people sometimes. Uh, it says this, Peter said to them, repent and each one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So here it says, repent, be baptized, you'll be forgiven, you'll receive the Holy Spirit. And, and what, um, especially in our English translations, like we see, if you repent and you're baptized, then you'll be forgiven. But whenever I look at this, like in the original language, and I study it deeper, what, what, what forgiveness is tied to, it's not tied to baptism, it's tied to repentance. It's tied to when you turn from your sin and believed in Jesus, then you're forgiven. And so what baptism is, is a symbol of what happened to you on the inside. We can turn to Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. It starts to break it down even more. It says this, Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus, have been baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness 
of life. So let me explain how this is a, a symbol. Um, this is you. You're dead in your sins before you receive Christ. Of course, you're still alive, like you still breathe and live. But spiritually speaking, you're dead. Then someone comes up to you and says, hello, would you like to receive Jesus? And you turn from sin and believe in Jesus. While you're dead in your sins, before that, when you turn from sin and believe in Jesus, then you are buried with Christ in baptism. The dead you has now been buried. There's no more old Jared. There's no more old you. That person has been buried. There's a funeral. The dead is gone. Then you're raised. Christ raises you up a new person. You have new life. It says in Ezekiel that you had a heart of stone. Well, now you have a heart of flesh. Like now you are falling in love with Jesus. Now you have a purpose. Now you can live to glorify God, right? Like so the, the dead person has been buried. Now you've been raised to walk in newness of life. Like whenever you watch a baptism, the pastor usually says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, raised to walk in newness of life. And so why do you get baptized? Do you get baptized to obey Jesus, to say, hey, I'm with that guy. And then second, you get baptized um, after salvation because your salvation is not dependent upon you getting wet. Like it's just water. The water does not save you. There's nothing holy about the water. Your salvation is based upon you turning from sin and believing in Jesus. Like when you turn from sin and believe in Jesus, then the power of God, boom, God saves you, his power, he delivers you. But then you get baptized after that to show what happened to you on the inside. It's an outward expression of what happened in your heart. In your heart, this is what happened. Cleansed, raised, new life. So when you get baptized, physically you're showing, this is what happened right here. You know, when you get baptized, you are, you, for the first time, you're sharing the gospel. You are in a huge way with a congregation of believers. You are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. You're showing that Jesus died for me. He rose from the dead. And now I have died and I have been risen and I am now going to walk with Jesus. And so I just want to encourage you to get baptized. In all of our videos, we finished in this way. Like we've had two things to take away. Whenever you receive Christ, you're a new creature. And so um, whenever you're a new creation, you are forgiven and you're free. Then we did the video on the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes to live inside, you now have peace and you now have power, power to overcome sin, power to live this new life. Then we, we talked about how um, whenever you receive Christ, that you join the community and how you need others and others need you, right? In this video, here's what I want to say. Two things. Get baptized. If you are a Christian, get baptized to show that you're a Christian and to share what Jesus did in your life, that he has washed your sins away and that you're a new creature. And then start trying to get others baptized. Share the gospel with others. Uh, make sure they understand that God loves them and that they need to be forgiven of their sins. And you have found new life and you just want to show them where they can find new life too. And then help them get discipled and help them take that step of obedience and to get baptized as well. I know it's been a little longer in this video and I just really wanted to take time to break this down because I believe it's a very important step. It's a moment in your life you can look back on. And, and I know that salvation is that moment. It's the most important moment. But other than that, you can look back at this celebratory event. I, I started this video by talking about meeting my wife, right? And how our wedding was like this celebratory event. And now every day I wear this ring. I wear this ring as a symbol of my love, my unending love for my wife. And, and baptism is that same thing. You can video it. You can look back at it and remember, right, that God has saved you. And you want to tell the world. Thank you guys. Can't wait for the next video. Y'all been awesome.